I'm supposed to talk about failure, but I'll talk about success first. 169 schools, 250 or 60,000 students, teachers, I don't know how many teachers, half a million parents probably. And the most difficult customer is the parent, not the student, not the teacher. This is success. Ladies and gentlemen, this is success. I have known KHDA and Dr. Abdullah Karam now for almost eight, nine years. Whenever we had a problem, me and Ashok, we went to doctor, and he always has a solution. He picks something from his head and says, this is it. Last time during the Arab Springs, because of the situation, we could not increase fees, and we could not afford to give increment to our teachers. He came up with a novel idea, the endowment fund. For the first time in the Middle East, any school, this was introduced in the Indian high school, the endowment fund, and all because of him. We sorted our problems out. <laughs> we sorted our problems out and we survived, we survived the Arab Springs. I can keep talking for hours about KHDA, about doctor, about his team, because education for me is a passion. Ladies and gentlemen, clapping is not enough. Let us give a standing ovation to Dr. Abdullah Karam and his team. This is it, louder. This really makes me happy. This really makes me happy. Why happy? KHDA, his team, and doctor has put Dubai, Dubai on the education map of the world. What Dubai has achieved, I have, I've got a habit of uh, keep on going to the Google, Safari, and doing research. Sitting alone sometimes, you don't know what to do. The two most dynamic education authorities in the world, I have come to a conclusion, two, much ahead. Sorry, I mean, there are some people from UK and USA probably, much ahead of these developed countries. Two cities, Singapore and Dubai. I'm not saying only Dubai, Singapore and Dubai. We are far ahead. We are far ahead and all within a span of six, seven, eight years. We should be, Dubai should be put, Dubai Education Authority should be put in the Guinness Book of Record for what they have achieved. I don't know why they have not done so. Doctor, Guinness Book of Record. We should be there. What has been achieved has not been achieved by any city in the world, in the history of the world. OK, let me get back to failure. Managing failures a life experience. The black swan. Tim, you know about black swan, right? These are events that come as a surprise and have a major impact on a country, organization, or an individual. It can be positive or negative. Al Shirawi group faced crisis from 1980, almost year after year due to external circumstances, the causes of fa failure. Starting from 1980, the Iraq-Iran war, the first bomb fell on our site in Basra. 10 people died, the first bomb. I mean, Iran had to choose our site to throw a bomb on the Al-Sharawi site, and 10 people die on the spot. So the first news item was al Shirawi site bomb, 10 people dead. 5,000 people stopped work, and they had to be repatriated immediately. They would not wait. They were getting very violent. So we had no choice but to send 5,000 people back home. Chief of our construction, he died of a heart attack. I received this information in New York I was sitting with my uncle, who was being treated for a malignancy. 
and he was a shareholder also. Six ships. We were the largest dealer of bag cement in the world. We used to move cement from one place to the other, including Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Six ships stuck in Basra, in the canal. They are still there after 33 years. Cement must have become stone and with no solution. This was a big loss. Banks stopped Al Sharawi Group's facility. They said, it's raining and we will not give you the umbrella. Thank you very much. Typical of them. They don't want to give you the money when you need the most. And when you don't need, they say, take it. Which is the situation today with the Al Sharawi Group. KPMG report on Al Sharawi's financial status. Basically, it said Al Sharawi Group is bankrupt and we cannot, we have to qualify the accounts. You all are chartered accountants. You know what this means. We are not meeting the international accounting standards. Have you all read this? Probably this is what you are taught. Al Sharawi's equity wiped out completely. From a positive of 52 million to a negative net worth of 70.12 million. Group. We lost money in Saudi Arabia, in West Africa, in Iraq, in Iran, you name it. Default of the Nigerian government. We were one of the largest dealers of cement in Nigeria. And we used to ship cement to Nigeria. Nigeria suddenly said, we have no money. And we will pay you within 20 years, 22 years, and the last payment we will receive from Nigeria will be in the year 2020. The promissory notes are being honored. The, the main cause, one of the main causes of failure was the oil prices in 1985-86 fell to $10 from $23 to $10. Everybody's budgets, all the oil producing countries were negative. I was sitting in Saudi Arabia in Jizan, all the way in Jizan, we had jobs there. And I had, sitting near me outside the CEO's office was a lawyer. And I said, why have you come here? He says, why have you come? I said, I've come here to collect money. He says, I have come here to advise how not to pay, how to avoid pay, how to delay payments. We both had a different agenda. Saudi so Arabian crisis, we had to repatriate 5,000 employees back because the government would not pay. You could not blame anybody. It was a crash. Iraq's occupation of Kuwait to add icing to the cake 19, 1990, Iraq took over Kuwait. Saddam decided to swallow it. Dubai, in 1990, because of the crisis, many expatriates decided to leave out of fear. But me and my partner, Abdullah Sharawi, said, Mohan, between Dubai and Basra, all the international navies are there. Uh, the Italian Navy, the French Navy, the British Navy, the US Navy, and the forces are there. And if Saddam is so powerful to defeat all these countries and come to Dubai, then it's okay, then he deserves it. <laughs> then we should work for him. So I said, he said, don't worry, be aggressive, go all out. We had I had, I had limited choices, either as an expatriate to run away. Many people did in the year 2009, kept their cars at the airport and flew off. Or be a professional and face the music. I decided, I'm making it short, you see. 
I decided to stay on and stick it out. We had to fight a battle almost every day. Some battles we won, some battles we lost, but we are focusing on winning the war. We put in a master plan of recovery. Uh, whatever executives were there, some of them are sitting here, one or two. Uh, Mr. Ramchandan is there still. And uh, we, decided, we decided to make a plan. Quite a few, 60 or 65% of the executives left. They said, sorry, we don't want to work for you. You know, it's always the case. When a ship is sinking, the rats are the first one to leave. So they left. Good, blessing in disguise. All the rest left. In retrospect, from 1987 to 1997, it took us 10 years to, be, to get our capital back and to be in the positive. So ladies and gentlemen, we had to pay the price 10 years of our life. Normally, the working life of a person is 44 years or 42 years. 11 years out of it is 25%. Now, but it paid results. We have so far invested 3 billion dirhams in fixed assets and upgrading plant and machinery to become one of the largest industrial group in UAE in the private sector. We have 6 million square feet of land, and as per the government regulations, we are allowed to, build, to construct 50%, which is 3 million square feet. This has already been done, 3 million square feet constructed. In the last 18 months, we have additionally acquired 5 million square feet with a plan to invest another two billion dirhams in the next five years. Group policy is not to indulge. This is very important for all of you because everybody wants to deal in commodities, easy, buy, sell, buy, sell, you know, go to the stock market, import rice, import sugar, sell. No, group's policy is not to indulge in any low margin business, but to focus on high value addition because if the value addition is high, you cannot go wrong, even if there is a slump. I'm proud to say that the Al Sharavi Group turnaround is a case study in the London Business School. And my son, he did his MBA and got an A plus and successfully completed his MBA with distinction. Case study of the Al Sharavi Group in the London Business School. It is there still on record, and most of the professors, you know how they are in London Business School, they really admired and appreciated. 2008 crisis. You all have seen 2008 crisis. You all have experience. Our, exper our experience of the past helped us in 2008 crisis. I think I'll have to turn this way. I used to write monthly and quarterly letters. I'll just give you the theme and the remark. All the letters are available on my website. 5th June 2005, real estate development was the theme. The cooling of the soup, liquidity. Remarks, cracks can be seen in the real estate market. Boom is unsustainable beyond the current pipeline of projects. There is early sign of liquidity crunch in the market. This is the letters I used to write. 1st January 2006, the wise stock and property markets vis-a-vis -vis group performance. Remarks, stock and property markets are unreasonably high. Ballooning prices of the markets are unhealthy. Correction is due. 22nd June 2006, chance favors the prepared mind. I told everybody, be prepared. Local markets, threat of inflation, and cracks in the local market. This was the remark. 13th 
December 2006, uh, six, another letter, Health of the Group. Greed is beginning to get a bad name. Economy is overheating. 15th July 2008, economy overheated, will correct. Imminent collapse, major correction overdue, supply is much higher than demand. 3rd December 2008, strategy during recession time, deleveraging booking loss is better than holding stock unnecessary, real economy will further correct. Now this point I want to highlight is we had a stock when the recession hit the bottom, we had a stock of about a billion dirhams, I think 900 million dirhams. Uh, I think it was 900 million. And I, I was called back, I had gone into retirement, I was called back as a managing director, and I told, I called in all the CEOs, the managers, I told them, I want these stocks liquidated in the next four months. They said, we lose. I said, how much? They said, at least 150 million drums. I said, budget for 150 million drums, loss is approved, liquidate the stock, give me the cash. They did liquidate, they lost 140, not 150. And we were cash rich, we were, uh, the Al Sharavi group was paying the banks money back and they were surprised. One bank told us, why are you paying the money back? People are sending the money out. I said, no, we'll pay back. I know, then you'll give us back again. So, 5th February 2009, funding risk. Real estate market will be flat, liquidity will be tight, many companies will face difficulties, interest rates will be high, and many companies will face bankruptcy. Property and local market will remain flat. Now, this is an important remark. 14th February 2010, all shareholders. Economy reached more or less the bottom, and it will be flat. Increase your margins. Take competitive advantage of the group fundamentals, but don't be complacent. Concentrate in the areas of sales, receivable, and, and expansion. We opened the floodgates. We came back into the market, and we started building industries. All this has paid dividends. Management philosophy of the Al Sharavi group. I've learned the hard way, but this is the management philosophy. Uh, you, you all will enjoy these figures, these assets, being chartered accountants. Net fixed assets should not exceed net worth. Fixed assets, in other words, fixed assets should not uh, be more than partners' funds. Benchmark is one is to one. Actuals on 30th June, 0.81. Total leverage, total liabilities versus net worth. Benchmark, one is to one. Actuals, 0.76. Financial gearing, financial debt versus net worth. Less than 0.6, actual 0.31. Is it good or bad? Is it good or bad? What happens, what happens if they uh, hit the benchmark and exceed? What happens? What do you think we should do? What do you think we should do if they cross the fundamentals, if they cross the benchmark? The moment they cross the benchmark, zero dividends. Everybody is told, shareholders. If this happens, no dividends. So everybody makes sure, because the shareholders are also the CEOs, that they don't cross the benchmark. We are much below that. Management philosophy of the Al Sharavi Group. Succession plan for the second generation, that is mean to the second generation already implemented. Third generation is being implemented. Pricewaterhouse, Nora, uh, she is uh, the woman behind the uh, rescheduling uh, agreements, etc., doing an excellent job. Corporate governance is excellence. Transparency, we have web based portals. Even the banks are not allowed to phone us and ask questions. 
There's a portal. We give them a password. They interact. They get their information. They don't phone us. All the LCs, transfers, everything is online. The head office, finance head office, has got only five people, while our peers, other people, have over 90 to 100 people. Five people doing the job of 100 people because we don't communicate with the banks. And transfers are everything online. We have an open door policy. Ah, by the way, talking about portals, I implemented this in my personal life. I have a portal, all my wills, my assets, everything is on the portal. And I have given a password to all my three sons and my wife. My wife says, I don't want to see it. My three sons have visited the portal. <laughs> I said, if you have a problem, tell me now. I don't want you to crib after I'm not there or after I die. I hated the idea of, I've seen in many uh, English movies, when the lawyer, he collects everybody and opens the will and he reads so much to so-and-so, so much to so-and-so. I said, no, everybody should know now what he or she is going to get. So this has, if this would have been implemented uh, in all the families in India, the big families, there would be no quarrels. The typical example is the big corporation, Ambani Brothers Reliance. Decision making is very fast. We have our, our board meetings at the, uh, on a drop of a hat. It's all conference calls, board meeting is on, and decisions are taken there and there. We don't give notices that we'll meet you after two days, board meeting is called, please come, this, no. Board meeting, urgent. We need to make an investment. Good opportunity. Everybody leaves everything straight on the phone. And there's a conference. Delegation of authority with responsibility that I hope is there in many organizations. And we have a strong internal audit consisting of about 20 chartered accountants, or I don't know how many. And where's Naveen Sharma? He's sitting here. He has, he's the head of internal audit, and he has a right, he has a right to question anybody, including me. If I deviate a little from here and there, straight. Sir, he's with me, he's a little polite, uh, <laughs> because uh, he says, sir, uh, I think through oversight, you, this has happened. I said, OK, OK, fine, please. Uh, otherwise, if there is a discrepancy, then it goes to the board, that the managing director and senior vice chairman has not uh, followed the rules. We have a checklist culture for everything. Everybody has a checklist, which is the easy way out. We have competitive interest rates and low financial fees. Cost of borrowing, 1.15% per annum without collateral and without personal guarantees. 1.15% per year, not per month. No guarantees, no collateral. And, and every financial institution in Dubai says, keep the money. Why? Why? Do you know why? No, we need it. We do, we do take. If we don't borrow at 1.15%, and if we cannot beat 1.15%, then we are not businessmen. But we do borrow within limits because our balance sheet is small, small, but in terms of fundamentals, is better than so many banks. So it's like, instead of placing money on the interbank market, we rather place the money with you. We invest very heavy in IT. Uh, we have one of the best IT professionals as a director of IT. Uh, we spend about, I mean about $10 million a year. We spend about $10 million a year on information systems. And this has really helped. This has really helped. Because we try to reduce people. In spite of that, we have 8,500 people. But 
we have 150 MBAs, 400 engineers, 20 CAs, 20 CPAs. Staff turnover ratio, this is very important. Doctor said to keep everybody happy. And this you can make out from the staff turnover ratio. I remember uh, five, six years back, uh, due to low salaries, staff turnover ratio in the Indian high school was as high as 35%. Today, it has gone down to 10%. Thanks to Mr. Ashok Kumar. So, so this is what it is, to keep everybody happy. Only 5%. I don't know whether it's healthy or not. Our view, now you all would like to know more about Dubai as coming from a businessman and coming from an expatriate. What is, should be the policy as far as investing in Dubai is concerned? with the problems, Arab Spring, what is our policy? What is the Al Sharawi group policy? Going forward, we have a vertical view, not a horizontal view. As far as investments are concerned, do not forget that a strong balance sheet is very important because uncertainty and volatility is the nature, not only for Dubai, but for the entire world. It can happen anywhere. So it's very important that we have a strong balance sheet, and we can hold on to any shocks. And don't fall into the trap like we fell in in 1986. So strong balance sheet is a must. What, why Dubai? Why should we be investing in Dubai? Here it is. The best infrastructure any city has. I have never seen such good infrastructure any city in the world. Dubai is my favorite city. Singapore used to be number one. Now Singapore has become number two. And Dubai has become number one. <laughs> it's a Middle East base for rest, recreation, and leisure activities. There's no place for leisure, for recreation. You cannot go anywhere and unwind. It is only Dubai. Middle East based for various operations of large number of companies. Most of the multinationals, they all want to come here. Most of the multinationals, they want to enter into joint ventures with us because of our infrastructure in the industrial sector. They are choosing Dubai. They have business in Saudi Arabia, they are choosing Dubai. They have business in Abu Dhabi, they are choosing Dubai. Why? You all know why. Based for the rich and famous from GCC, India, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, CIS, European countries, tax-free heavens. Based for the rich GCC nationals to settle down and educate their children. If we don't have a good education base, expats, professionals, the rich people will not come to Dubai because what really matters to them is their children and education of their children. When I was the chairman of uh, the Indian school, uh, of course, my term has got over. I was not kicked out. Four years were over, so I had to, res uh, I had to retire. Uh, we were just having a casual chat with uh, Sheikh Ahmad. This is about six, seven years back. And he casually asked me, what do you think uh, we should do to attract foreigners? This was sometime in 2010, when the economy was bad. I said, schools, education. Support KSDA, and you will see people coming in and walking in. This is exactly what is happening. People are pouring into here. People are staying in Dubai. People are working in Abu Dhabi and staying in Dubai. That speaks for itself. Dubai has no competition in the area. No competition. Can you imagine a straightforward walkthrough? Can you imagine you are playing football and there's no team on the other side? No competition. They will just get the ball, go straight into the goal. <laughs> Dubai, Dubai is a city, not a country. Dubai cannot accommodate the world. Dubai cannot accommodate the world. The whole world wants to come here. How Dubai is going to accommodate? 
is a problem which the government and people like Dr. Abdullah Karam, they have to solve. It's a, becoming a knowledge-based economy. It's not oil-based. There are many oil-based economies in the world, or I would say in the area, the OPEC countries. But Dubai is the only place which is a knowledge-based. And of course, tourism, etc. But the main thing is knowledge-based. Healthcare, aviation is picking up. It was not up to the mark. Healthcare was not up to the mark. Still, there's room for improvement, but it's going up fast. My presentation has put all the blame on the, on the black swan. Am I evading responsibility? What, what do you, who do you think made the maximum mistakes? Who do you think was responsible for max, maximum failures? Me. I was the one who made maximum mistakes, and I've learned from my mistakes. That is why people today call me wise, because I have made more mistakes than anybody else in the group. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. The mistakes which I made, heavily leveraged balance sheet, geographical diversification. We had offices and businesses in Tokyo, Hong Kong, Singapore, Iran, UAE, Oman, Muscat Salala, Iraq, Baghdad, Basra, Saudi Arabia, Damam, Riyadh, Jizan, Tabuk, London, Geneva, Nigeria, Lagos, Port Harcourt. I was crazy. I could not sleep. The time difference between Japan and Nigeria, I don't know how many hours I had in between. But my wife used to admire me. She said, a phone call comes, you pick up, you talk, you keep it, and again you go to sleep. How do you do it? I did it. I was young. We had, in those days, there was manual accounting. There was no internet. The, the management information system was weak. And we had weak internal audit also. Now, if we would have had a strong balance sheet, we could have survived better as we did in 2009. And what was the reason for all this? Why weak balance sheet? Because of greed. Because I was greedy. I wanted to be rich soon. I was young. I wanted to really make it. I thought making money was the only thing. And when you are greedy, there's no transparency. Your quality of ethics is low. And if you, if you compromise on merit, that is a sure shot, uh, sure shot failure. It's a recipe for failure. Prosperity is sustained on the, bread, on the bedrock of values. OK, here I'll ask a question. How many companies, corporates in India have lasted more than 100 years? How many companies? Only one, Tata's. Why? Only one company has lasted more than 100 years. Why? Because the management philosophy to last 100 years, it's itself a challenge. And to be excellent and at the top is definitely a big achievement because they don't compromise on values. They don't compromise on merit. And another advice for you, all of you, so that you all remain young, always be in a learning mode. Learning mode. Now, I, I'll ask, I want somebody to reply. What do I mean by learning mode? What? That young kid, yeah. He has a reply. OK, if you say keep on learning, I can just go on the internet and have information. You keep on learning. You keep on punching. Keep on doing your mathematics and science. Learning mode is giving up old ideas and adopting new ideas. This is learning. If you are stuck to old ideas, you can never learn. You may have information, but you can't learn. You got to learn to change. You got to learn to give up old ideas. Whatever is your age, you can be 80 years of age and be as young as 20, and you can be 20 years of age and be as old as 80. I know quite a few young kids 
who are 20, but they are as old as 80. They refuse to change. They want to sit on the coach, be a coach potato, and watch TV. So always be in a learning mode. Winners never quit, and quitters never win. Next time there's a crisis, don't leave your car at the airport. Fight it out. Because if you believe in Dubai, if you believe in Dubai, you will always prosper. People who have believed in Dubai have done well. Even I'm talking about experts now. And experts who have not believed in Dubai, kept their money out somewhere, New York, here and there, and not invested here, have not done well. So winners never, if you agree with me, please repeat after me. Winners never quit. Winners never quit. And quitters never quit. Quitters never quit. That's it. Thank you very much. I hope, I hope all of you have learned something from it. Thank you, sir.